as lines. As boys' lines. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. You're listening to the As Bold as Lions podcast. Hello and welcome to the As Bold as Lions podcast. I'm your host, Derek, Derek Charles Johnson. So good to have you join me today. Um, just rolling through uh, this year 2024, it seems like um, things are just kind of picking up and we're already into the month of March. Um, got Easter coming up later this month. Got right behind it, April and May and spring. And before you know it, we're talking about summer plans and, and trying to get ahead of all that. It's crazy how fast time goes. Um, just, uh, thinking of all of that, um, kind of is tying in with, with what we're talking about today, which is, um, a bit of a, I don't want to say a detour because it's not something that was unplanned. It was definitely something that I planned to, to focus on and look at. Um, but just the, the brevity of life and just how things quickly just move forward. Sometimes we just have to hit pause and just say, okay, um, you know, thank you, God, for, for this opportunity. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you as I can look back to something that has occurred in my life and uh, and just celebrate you and give you praise over that. So that's what we're doing today. Um, kind of jumping right in. There's not like a, a big intro or, or segue into any of this. And I'll try to kind of explain as we move along what what this episode really is is being made for why why we're even take, taking time to to look at uh what we're talking about which is 10 years of carry on um going back into the past back into the 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 time time travel machine the way back machine and 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 looking at uh something that uh is is pretty near and dear to my heart from from what I've uh done in um just kind of uh, something that's been important in going into ministry. So um, I blogged about this. If you're a, a blog follower, if you're on the As Bold as Lions subscriber mailing list, which I encourage you to do that because not only is it the blog of the month, but it's devotionals, um, maybe even more so than what the blog is. You get these uh, three times a week, thrice weekly, I guess, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, devotionals to your email inbox, and uh, you can sign up at my website, DerekCharlesJohnson.com. But the monthly blog is usually something I, I do a podcast about as well, and so this 10 years of carry on um, was something to just focus on for this month of March. Uh, was looking ahead at 2024. And all of a sudden, it just kind of dawned on me, like, hey, it's been 10 years already since this album released. Um, hasn't been something I've talked about uh, on the podcast or on my blog a, a ton. And, you know, 10 years goes by and you drop something, you you, you record a song, a single, or, um, you, you know, you make an album, you you write a book, you you do whatever, and there's a there's a big you know kind of hoopla over that initial thing coming out, kind of leading up to it, and then actually when it drops and it hits, and then you're kind of promoting it for a while. Um, but it's been a while, so I haven't necessarily gone back and and just kept <laughs> hitting that, talking about it a lot. Um, but you know, in the last. This this I'll go into this, but this Carry On Project the album that I did, very first album I did, but I've done some things more recently in the last four to five years that I probably have talked about more here, and uh, and just given it some some thought. Um, things like the Hymns Project that I did, or the uh, the Christmas Project that I recently did. 
some things that I've I've just as I've had the podcast and had the opportunity to share about them. I've I've taken that uh, those chances to do that. So I'm gonna kind of inter interweave some some clips of some of these songs, so you'll you'll kind of hear that uh, in the midst of this podcast will be kind of that format again. Um, but this this is really just an episode to just kind of say, hey, 2024 is here. It's been 10 years. Let's hit pause. Let's reflect on this. And then in that, just give the Lord, give God all the glory. So you're listening to this podcast and you've stumbled upon it for some reason, or you're just a, a more of a long, longer time listener that has, uh, has been following this and, and, uh, we've hit different things this year already, like the book of Jonah. We just did, um, uh, we did something on, uh, hardened, avoiding a hardened heart that was back in February and then something just now on the hiding place. Um, so as we kind of pivot and go to this particular show and this episode, you're, you're probably thinking like, why should I care about this album? Why should I carry about, care about carry on? Man, I'm tri- tripping over my words here. And to that, I'd say, good question. That's a great question. Why should you care about it? Um, you know, it wasn't, uh, this huge release, just an independent thing that I did, didn't make any main major waves in the Christian music industry. You probably would know that by now if, if it was something like that. Um, and outside of my own family and friends and, and folks that have maybe been um, part of churches that I've been in, you know, outside of that, it's, it's a small audience that, that really knows about um these songs and and just about this this album in in general but for me um it has it will always have left this just kind of indelible mark on my life um and just the entry into other things that i've done as far as with music or ministry um carry on was sort of just this this first step into so much of that Kind of for me, I, I, I call it a gateway, a uh, gateway that has led to other things that I do. And, and namely, that being as well as lines, which is the podcast, the blog, the devotionals, all of that stuff, or just my own music, which is um, under my name, Derek Charles Johnson. So uh, it, it just, it kind of got the ball rolling on a lot of this stuff. And so as I look back today and, and as I kind of, um, you know, peel back the, the layers a little bit just to kind of show where this came from, I hope that you hear my heart, that it's like this is important um, for me to just kind of give this a, a, a little bit of a recognition, not for me, not for like, hey, I'm a big deal because I'm not. Um, but just to say, thank you, God, you know, thank you because I can see what the fruit that has come from even just allowing this first step kind of to take place. So a bit of history, um, 2013, uh, actually 2013 was, uh, later in that year in the fall was when the, the album was recorded, um, finished in 2014 and released in 2014. But in 2013, I'm I'm working as a pharmacist. That's what my, I guess, quote unquote, day job was, um, uh, and, and and then also a part time worship leader, and just the juxtaposition of those two career paths, um, you know, made for some interesting days to kind of figure out how to have a foot in. A very uh, specific um, 
a precise much of the time uh you know your headspace is 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 making the right decisions making the right calls as far as healthcare related things and helping people which i do love that side of uh, of that field but having a very precise sort of uh profession and then being a worship leader a creative uh, um a guy in music where you still have some of that precision, but there's a lot more of this kind of, um, I'm going to mess it up. I don't know which was right brain and which is left, but you're kind of splitting those two things a lot of the time. So it made for some, for some interesting times, uh, for several years there where these, these things are overlapping. Uh, in 2009, uh, I made the decision to go back to Bible school and to go into worship ministry specifically to, to become a worship pastor. That was my goal. Um, I had left, uh, we had, we had been in, uh, in the early part of two thousands, um, working full time in pharmacy, started taking some courses online with, um, Bible college kind of thinking about all this and then eventually, moved in and uh, went full-time back into school. And so after um, several years of planning that, preparing, I graduated in 2011 and then was working at a local church in South Dakota. So this whole time we're in North Dakota, we're, um, we're then into South Dakota to, uh, to start in ministry. And really this season of, I'd say from 2011, finishing uh, Bible college, and then 2013, which I guess would kind of be where carry on sort of comes to light. That that's that was a pretty intense season, pretty intense couple of years there. Um, involved working far, full time in a pharmacy job um, while then leading worship and just building into uh, the church's worship ministry that that was already established, but just kind of. Um, coming on as an intern and then taking over uh, more of a, a staff role. And um, we didn't live in the town where our church and the pharmacy I worked at was in. So it was a commute each day. We were in a town called Ellendale, North Dakota, which was where Bible college I attended was at Trinity Bible college, uh, go Lions, And then uh, Aberdeen, South Dakota, which um, about a, an hour's commute, uh, roughly both ways. So just to kind of set the stage uh, of just what things were going on in my life as these songs start to kind of take shape. In the longing I wait for you In the city Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 states, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Um, that's a verse that really, the, the, the song clip we just had a little um, blurb of is called You Are Good, and that's, that song really has... A lot to do with that verse. If I'm playing that song live, I usually read that verse and uh, just explain that throughout our lives, it's a it's always a process of of submitting ourselves, of humbling ourselves, realizing that the Lord's ways and his his plan is 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 higher and and, and loftier and 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 better than our ways, uh, and to follow Him and to and to trust Him. So as I am kind of setting the stage here for, for what um, takes place in, in leading into uh, this album, Carry On. Um, you, you would look inside my heart and just some of the passions that I had during this time, and still do, 
which fueled a lot of the lyrics and a lot of the content that um, comprises Carry On. I think at this time, just was desperately longing for God to open doors and then waiting on his timing, um, trusting that he's good despite not seeing the answer. Just going back to that, you know, my ways are not your ways and trusting that his ways are good. Uh, also, just making sure my foundation in him was secure because let's be honest, today, as much as any time in our lives, there's the shifting sands that the culture has that that um, we can try to found, put as a foundation for our lives, but they're not going to be enough to stand upon and they're not going to withstand the storms of life. Um, and so I'm I've got this back and forth commute uh, to to work to to church, lots of time to just kind of ponder life at this stage, you know, and to think, um, married with, uh, three kids, um, you know, trying to just juggle all the, all the things as a, as a dad, as a husband, as a provider, um, you know, working a, a grueling, um, career in, in pharmacy, uh, which is which is always just uh, a complete, you know, whether you're there eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, it's it's just nonstop, um, a retail pharmacy type job. And then shifting into ministry, which is which is like a whole uh, other part of, of life. Uh, if you're if you're called to, to do kind of vocational ministry and uh, and wanting to meet needs as, as kind of a shepherding role from from the platform, meeting the needs of the church through the lyrics and the songs that we're singing and, and bringing people into worship and also shepherding the team that you're leading each week, the, the players on the, on the team, the, uh, the people in the sound booth, all those people that are kind of part of what happens on a Sunday or whenever, uh, worship is happening. And so all of this kind of culminating and coming together, and uh, lyrics really became part of, of the drive, uh, the commute. And then, you know, thinking of lyrics, recording voice memos into my phone, and then getting home and having a chance to, like, sit down with a, a guitar or um, a piano or something and, and kind of hammer out some of these ideas. And, and songs were really birthed through this experience, you know, getting in the bedroom or out on the couch or whatever, and just kind of uh, penning my heart, opening my heart up to the Lord through these songs. And these songs were just gathered up through the years of just trying to see where God was leading us, what he was doing, you know, asking lots of questions, um, wrestling with maybe where I was at in life and where I had hoped to be or, or really longed to be. And some of the tension of like, man, God, I, I, I want to be down this path, but it's, it's a little bit harder than, than I thought it would be, or it's taking longer than I thought it would take. Um, how do I trust you with this, with what I think you've entrusted me to do? So I can't go into all the details because it would be a very lengthy, probably multi series, um, podcast of, uh, the, the story of, of carry on and just, uh, of Derek Charles Johnson, um, uh, just in general. And I, I don't want to do that. Um, but kind of to get quicker to the point, uh, in 2013, I connected with a producer, uh, a music, you know, record producer, named Tommy Prophet, and at the time he lived in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I had kind of been working on some songs, getting to the point where I would record some things just if I was on the keyboard or I was with guitar or whatever, and I'd just kind of record like a video of it and then put it on YouTube and sort of like use those clips sometimes to spam people and just say, hey, listen to this or whatever, not really even, you know, thinking more than just trying to get your, your stuff out there for, for, to get it in front of people. And Tommy was one of these guys who actually replied back. And, uh, and these are rough, you know, clips of these, these songs. These are about as, as stripped down and, and rough and as bare as you can think. 
And in, in his graciousness, Tommy replied back and he said, hey, if you ever want to do something more with your songs, um, let me know. I'd love to love to help you. And I'm really grateful for that. I'm really grateful that the opportunity came together for for me to record with Tommy Prophet. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, it's in the blog um, as well. If you if you go to read this um, this episode, basically, but you can look at Tommy's uh, his own bio. He's actually got a Wikipedia page and just some of the things and the people that he's worked with. Um, I won't go into it, but he's a he's now a signed producer. Um, Capital Records, I believe he's he's gone definitely some big places uh, in the 10 years since uh, I worked with him, but pretty amazing and um, pretty just um, fortunate, not fortunate. I mean, I will, I will say, God, you opened that door. You made that possible for, for me to work with him. And so this, this story uh, of carry on really um, has his, his imprint upon it as well, which I'm grateful for. Let our lives begin to the end of our days You watch over every step we take You are good in all your ways We will lift our hands in praise to you We will worship all you are King of glory Picking up um, kind of in the middle of that, recorded for a week with Tommy in Michigan. Uh, he's in Grand Rapids. I have an aunt, Judy, um, who lives in Holland, Michigan, and I had the opportunity to stay with her for a week. It was just, again, really cool uh, way that God set these things up for me to stay there and then do the recordings, um, travel into to where Tommy's studio was in his home and, uh, and get these songs, um, put together. Um, and just really cool to have these ideas that were in my head and sort of fleshed out, you know, starting to kind of come together to then have them really come to life. Um, really a surreal experience, something I don't think I'll ever forget is going through this process of recording, uh, my first album recording the song ideas that, that God had really just given me through these last few years. Um, yeah, just to say for, for a budding songwriter, a singer songwriter, a worship leader, uh, the chance to, to go and record and put something out there, kind of a permanent thing. You know, if you're, if you're talking about writing a book or, you know, um, maybe writing a play or painting some, you know, sculpting something or recording something like there's, there's just a really cool thing that it's, it's really hard to describe until you've done that, you know, just creating anything that then is then shared with the world. That's kind of put out there like an extension of yourself, really an extension of the Lord. Um, if he's, if he's, you know, if you're a believer and you're, you're doing this, uh, um, with his kind of impetus and, and urging, um, you know, it, we, songwriters, we talk about having our, our babies, uh, songs being our babies that, uh, and then the attachment of all of this is, is sort of kind of like the birthing process. And I would just say, hang with me here because I know this is not anywhere close to what real childbirth is like, but, um, we kind of put it in those terms because it's like, once you've released your song out into the world, uh, this, this part of you is out there and, um, not only of ourselves, but if we are in Christ to reflect our walk in him, um, and in that our desire to bring him glory. And it, it is, it's a vulnerable process. You know, every time I record something, every time I, even these podcasts, it's a vulnerable thing to like put something out there because you're saying, 
is anybody going to care about this? Is this going to ruffle any feathers? Are people going to agree with this? Is it just going to fly under the radar and nobody's going to know or hear any of this? Those are all thoughts that we have. But I think the Lord is calling us to be obedient with what we have, what he's put in front of you, what he's placed in your hands. And then you, you just, you offer that back up to him and you say, Lord, I release this back to you. I release the control over it. I release what's going to happen with it. I just know that you're calling me to do it and that you would use it for your glory. And so that's um, where the songs of carry on work. We're, we're kind of this first attempt to do that, just to share what God's laid on my heart and uh, really a reflection of a lot of journal entries and a lot of things over many years that, that I'd just kind of been penning and, and just um, praying over. And I have much more that I could say about carry on this release um, and, and more details that have come together leading up to and recording this album. Um, could talk about how God led my family to move to the town then, which uh, our church and the pharmacy job was located. We did move to Aberdeen and um, all in the midst of praying about what we should even do with this record, if that was even something I was supposed to be doing. How in the midst of a lot of this, God miraculously healed my son Micah the same year, 2013, uh, before this came out. In the spring of that year, he had a severe epileptic event, a seizure uh, episode, um, and something in which he was just completely healed, never had any lingering, um, you know, residual issues with that, and um, been seizure free that, you know, that in itself has been 10, 11 years ago, and, and no carryover from that. But in the midst of all of this, that occurred. Um, how my sister Shelly, and if Shelly's listening to this, um, she's part of this story as well. Just grateful for her. She took the CD that I had the of Carry On and brought it to a a festival promoter, starting a, a new Christian music festival in my hometown in Duluth, Minnesota, and just said, "Hey, my brother has a CD. He's originally from Duluth, uh, Minnesota. Um, love for you just to consider having him." And that being kind of the 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 entry point, I said, carry on, open some doors. It, it definitely did. Um, the entry point into City on the Hill Music Festival, which uh, if any Duluthians are listening to this, um, I thank you. you. You've been supportive uh, in many ways of this album and this project. Uh, and I've been there since 2015, every year at City on the Hill. Um, it's kind of tradition just to kick it off. And, and I've loved to have that, that role and that, that humble privilege to, uh, to start this festival each year. Um, I could go into all those things and I could go into, to even more, but, um, in all of this, this album helped to pave the way. Um, and it helped, uh, you know, to, to give us the trust to keep following the Lord through his province providence, um, this album has helped my family and I literally carry on in trust, uh, moving from North Dakota to then South Dakota and, and now Tennessee, uh, since 2017. So the Lord's been good. And, um, yeah, the album's a little dated now it's 10 years, but if you go back and listen to it, I hope you can hear, my heart still through all those songs and those lyrics and to say um, the same God that I trusted in then is, is still the same God today. Well, guys, so as I wrap up this sort of out-of-the-box 
podcast episode here on the As Bold as Lions podcast. Um, I want to say on March 11th, 2024, whether you're listening before that time or, or sometime after, Carry On will turn 10 years old. And in some ways for me, um, it feels longer than 10 years. It feels like you could say 20 or 25 and I'd be like, yeah, it's, it feels like so much life has happened in those 10 years that it could be even longer than that. But in this, this span of time, I've seen the Lord provide again and again. Um, and the message still resonates with me when I hear these songs. It, it'll just hit me where it's just like, wow. I didn't even know what I was writing back then, but but now it's like taking on this this whole other meaning in some ways. Um, I've dusted off a few of these and recorded some acoustic versions uh, on YouTube. Would love to have you check those out um, on the blog. I'm gonna put those links in. I'll I'll put those in the show notes on here as well, actually, um, just so I can kind of keep those in front of you if you if you care to listen to some kind of. Um, what they maybe sounded like a little bit more when they were first written. Let's put it that way. Um, but I'm reminded of the, the God who is the same God who spoke to me during those commutes, those drives He's the same God who speaks now in 2024 as life looks a lot different now having five kids instead of three. Um, and he'll continue to be the same God in 10 more years if he should tarry. And guys, um, like I said, kind of a little different today. It's not a three-point message. But I hope the message is clear from the music and from just kind of reminiscing. You could probably hit pause on your own life and say, you know, what was God doing saying 10 years ago? Where was I in life? Where was I year, five years ago? Where was I a year ago? And and just see the way He's he's written the story of your life. I am compelled to say that he watches over his own. His plans are for good and not harm, and that he's calling us to trust him beyond what we saw yesterday, what we saw last week, last month, or last year. For me, Carry On is a monument, sort of an Ebenezer stone, if you will, of his faithfulness. And I look back with fondness, and I know the path that he's led uh, led myself on, led my family on, it has had purpose. And if we, if we continue to trust him, he'll keep leading us. I hope that you've come to know that God, that you've come to know him as Lord and Savior and trusted in Jesus Christ and surrendered your life to him. Confess, um, confess your sins. Um, believe that, that he came to die for you. And put your your faith and your hope in Him. Thankful to everybody who's listened to um, this podcast. Listen to uh, carry on if you've if you've heard it. Um, I'll put a, a some streaming platform links in there for you to check it out if you if you haven't. Um, and if you are just new to the ministry of As Bold as Lions, if you're new to this podcast or or my music, I'd I'd invite you to just come along and 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 stay on the journey with me. Um, there's, there's good things that I believe the, the Lord is doing. And, um, this is just kind of my small corner of the world where I, uh, I come to just hopefully encourage people, um, folks that have come alongside in the last 10 years, especially who, um, a lot of times encourage me. I feel like I get more than I, I ever give out, um, uh, to others, but I, um, have been blessed by so many that have, have just get, said they've been blessed. And so, um, does my heart much good. Let's continue to pursue Christ together. Um, see what he's, he's got in store. And, um, after this podcast episode, just a quick note, we're going to have a couple weeks off and then come back right uh, the week of Easter, uh, the Monday leading up to Easter. I plan to have something kind of scheduled for that. And then uh, figuring out what April is going to take shape and look like. Haven't quite wrapped my mind around that yet. So I'm hoping to get some inspiration, get some uh, words from, from God of what 
what direction we need to go. Um, but lots of episodes to go back and listen to if you haven't, um, if you're needing something in the meantime, in the space of a couple weeks off. I'm um, going to close with our theme verse, which is Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. We close with this every time. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Guys, God bless. Carry on. On Christ the solid rock I stand, my foundation is secure. I'm standing on His promises, for I know they will endure. Although the ground is sinking sand, although the ground is sinking sand, don't let me wonder from all of the wonder. Keep me grounded, it's true I found that All my hopes in you Don't let me wander from all of the wonder Oh, I found in you Lord, keep me grounded, it's true I found that All my hopes in you Hey guys, this is Derek Charles Johnson You have been listening to the As Bold as Lions podcast. I am a blogger, a songwriter, an artist. And if you've been encouraged by this podcast, please go ahead and subscribe and share. And head over to DerekCharlesJohnson.com for more encouraging content. God bless.